Okay, terrific. Jude, hey, congratulations on your film, Q. Thank you. <laughs> so nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you too. So so more of a congratulations. This is this documentary is being showcased at Tribeca. I mean, how how do you feel about that? I mean, I feel amazing. It's very validating because it's like a personal story. You definitely think, well, maybe it's just a home video or, you know, no one's going to be interested in my family. But when we got the acceptance, it was like, OK, <laughs> this is something bigger. <laughs> it, it is most definitely big. And um, but, but, you know, the common question we always get asked is what actually sparked you to do this documentary in the first place of Q? Yeah, I mean, so it, it focuses on my mother's relationship to this secretive Muslim women's order. Um, and I, I grew up with this group that my mom was part of. And so it was really hard to ever have that separation and that distance to be able to see, okay, as a filmmaker, this is a story that I could document. Um, but I think when I moved to the US and had that kind of distance and that time apart, I was able to look at it through that filmmaker lens and um, really feel the importance of the story, the responsibility, um, and um, just the curiosity that I felt about about knowing more about the group and my mom's relationship to the group. So what what did you know personally about the group before you tackled this uh, project? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew how invested my mom was. I knew that like they all dressed the same. Um, I knew kind of like that surface level stuff of like, what they're trying to teach, um, how the organization actually functions. But I think with going into the film, I uncovered the attachment that my mom has and how deep that attachment was, how deep that love was, um, which goes far beyond all that surface level sense of control that I thought I knew. This was like, no, this is on an emotional level, the control and the hold that they have on her. Now, of course, as you mentioned, the secrecy of the group. One of the hardest things for any documentary is to break down that wall and have them open up. How did you actually convince them to do this? Um, yeah, I mean, they were very hesitant for starters. Um, my grandma was really excited about it. I mean, I think she just loves the attention in the camera and just like seeing how great she looks. <laughs> but uh, for my mom, I mean, it's like, there's so much weight that comes with that. There's um, it's very heavy. It's a group that she's been committed to her whole entire life, 40 years. Um, and so I think she was definitely out of love for her daughter. She started working on it. I don't think that she had kind of thought too much about the future with it. Um, but the more that she was around the camera, the more that they all were, the more they became comfortable with it um, and then st really stopped noticing it at a certain point. So was it awkward for you to uh, interview uh, family members for a film? Um, not necessarily. I mean, there's so much like there's so much trust. There is so much comfort. Um, I think it's it was more of like this is it's really emotional. And so you know, I'm seeing my mother cry. Um, I'm I'm seeing how much pain she's feeling because of being with the group. And so um, I would say that was the biggest challenge during the interviews, not as much as like, um, yeah, the awkwardness of the interview. So upon uh, all, all this discovery of, uh, you know, emotions and pain, you discovered it while filming or you kind of knew about this before? I mean, I knew, I knew that they had a whole strong hold on her for sure. Um, the amount of love and the, um, yeah, the amount of control they had over her heart, I was pretty shocked by. I thought she had, she was slowly getting over it. I thought that we were going to, like, reach this this place together where, you know, she can say, okay, I regret the 40 years. Um, she can kind of have that clarity. But in the making of the film, the shock for me was that, like, um, um, when she has that distance with the group, she misses them and she wants to go back to them and um, she regrets leaving them and she wishes that they'd forgive her. So as a, as a third generation um, person in, in this family and in the film, was, was there a hesit hesitancy for yourself to put yourself into the film too? Um, I mean, yes. 
and it's not it's it's I'm in there and I'm in there like really subtly I'd say I would say like a lot of uh, some feedback that we had gotten during the edit was like we want to see more Jude want to see more Jude I think I always just felt like this is not I knew it was my mother's story. Like it was not about what I uncover in doing this. It was really about like trying to get her to this certain spot. Um, I do feel that she was very vulnerable in that. And, you know, um, maybe me not inserting myself makes me less vulnerable, which I see. But at the same time, it just never felt like this is a story about me. Like this is really, this is the emotion. This is the spiritual journey that she's going on. And I need to talk about that breakup that she has with the group. Um, that doesn't involve me. So during the editing process, because that, because we, we know like during the interview and production process is one thing, but during the editing process, what was going through your head as you are trying to create a story revolving about uh, around your mother? Yeah, I would say the edit was the hardest part of making the whole film. It was like, honestly, it felt like hell, just trying to shape a story for starters, but also trying to... Um, constantly like come in with fresh eyes, trying to see the universal um, impact that it could have, making sure that it doesn't feel too closed off, making sure that people can feel like they can connect to the story. Um, I would say that was the biggest challenge in the edit. Um, and going into it, it was, it was mostly about making sure that the story made sense and doing justice to her story. How about the uh, old footages that you used um in in your film how did you find that and um and then also basically transcribe it uh, perfectly I, because i know you're a cinematographer so it's probably was it was it an easy process <laughs> um yeah so the archive we we my dad shot a lot when we were growing up so we have a lot of that archive which is great um there's the moment of my mom in her high school play i remember when i found that tape i was like freaking out like this is it because when she when she was in that play that's the moment that the head of the group um told her either you know you choose us or you choose this and that's the moment that she committed to the group so i knew it was so essential to the story um and i think we use archival um not greatly in the film. I mean, I mean, not a lot in the film. Um, and it just like, it's very precise when it comes in. It takes us back to a certain time and it has like a strong intention with it, but we're very much in the present. So for those people who don't know, what what is this group called and what's the purpose of the group? Yeah, so the group is called the Kube Siet. Um, They started in Syria in the 70s. Um, it's an all women's religious group. Um, and their purpose to start with was to revive Islam in the region. This is like post-colonization um, and really at a time where we're losing our sense of identity. And so I really think that like their intentions to begin with were incredible. And they like educated women and gave them jobs and really took them outside of their homes. Um, but I think with any type of group, like you lose sight of the goal that you had along the way and then like power comes into it. Um, and so I always think that their intentions were good. I just think that they they focus so much on how can we maintain the group rather than um, the purpose of the group. And that and that's hence why you you kind of associate had your mother associate with certain people in the, in this group, just trying yeah. to maintain the uh, the influences. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, and the title, I guess it's it's all because uh, most of us can't pronounce. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Just made it easy for everyone. <laughs> yeah, no, the title, I mean, on the surface level, it's like, it's the Kubaisia, it's the name of the group. Um, but on the deeper level, it's about this, um, in Sufi lore, there's a mountain called Mount Kof in Arabic, which is Q. It's the letter Q in Arabic. Um, and it's like the highest destination you can reach in this life of like spiritual awakeness. And so really what I'm trying to do in the film is like take her there and when she gets there to realize that like she didn't need anyone along the way, like it was just, she just needed herself. She didn't need the Annie, so she didn't need the group. Um, and so it it stands for this like monumental moment in the film uh, where Hiba really becomes Hiba and she doesn't need um, anyone else. So how, how, was, uh, how was the family reception to your film uh, so far? Yeah. Um, I think now they're excited about it. I think they're definitely excited about the premiere next week. They're all coming. Um, so that's going to be exciting. But um, I mean, I think they're very hesitant. I think my mom is still hesitant. I think she's afraid of 
um, how the group will perceive the film because they're so secretive. So, you know, whether you say something good or bad about the group, mm. um, them it's just bad because <laughs> like, you're not supposed to talk about them. They just feel like it's a certain level of exposing. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, my mom, I think she's realizing more and more that this is her story. She's entitled to her story. They're part of her life. So obviously they're part of the story. Um, and I just think that that's only going to grow as the film premieres and she sees the reception and she's celebrated in that way. So you think there there is a chance out there that the group is going to watch your film? Um, I mean, I would love that. I just feel that, I don't know. I just feel like regardless, they won't be able to see the beauty in it. Like, it's really interesting. If you take the transcript of the film, my mom doesn't say anything bad about the group. Right. Um, but they'll just, just, they'll just see it that way. And so, I mean, I would love for them to see it and to see that like the intentions were not to, were not bad intentions. They were never to expose people. It was to talk about her specific experience with them. Now, um, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but this is your, uh, this is technically your directorial debut um, as, um, as a documentarian. Um, how was that experience for you? Yeah, it's my, yeah, so it's my first feature. Um, I had done shorts before, but this was like a whole different beast. Um, it was, I learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot. I learned also just like about myself and my vision. And, you know, when you have, we got a great amount of like funding and institutional support. And um, it's, it really taught me to, when there's a lot of sound to be able to kind of silence certain sound and just focus on like, what was the original intention of making the film? Because, you know, a lot of people obviously have feedback and there's something that they want to see in the film, but to really be able to tap into um, what you see for the film and what was your general genuine vision, especially coming from the region. Like, it's so easy to just be like, okay, Arab film, this is what it has to say. Muslim woman, um, oppressed, here we go, a cult film they're oppressed again. It's like, it's really not like that. It's, um, it's such a, a layered story and, um, very nuanced and nothing's good and bad. It's like really in that gray area. So what's up next for you after this project? Um, I mean, I'm just going to celebrate it right now, <laughs> but I definitely, um, I mean, I love documentary and I really, want to stay making films in the region. Um, I have like a broad idea of something next that I'd want to do about like, how did we as Arabs get to this point? Um, but I'll just take a little bit of time before we start on that. Well, it is a celebratory moment um, for, you, for yourself, but let me leave with one last thought, Jude, because, you know, the audiences at Tribeca will have a chance to watch your film and um, and hopefully it expands more, more and more people to watch this film. What is the one most important take that you hope that your audiences walk away with after viewing this? Yeah, I think um, I really just hope that they don't see it as like an identity piece and they can just really feel with her and go on that emotional journey with her and just leave feeling, like I said earlier, just like that that rich Muslim experience that goes beyond being Muslim and is just human and they can connect with her on a human level. I feel like that would have, that would make me feel very accomplished. Well, you've done it and it's, and it's at the most uh, prestigious uh, film festival in the world. So, Hey, Jude, congratulations on Q. Thank you uh, very much uh, for carrying this conversation. And I, I look forward to uh, more projects from you because, uh, because it, it's, 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 it's emotional. It, it is. There's that connection. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Next. Okay. <laughs>